Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Future in Review podcast. I'm Barrett Anderson, COO of Future in Review and Strategic News Service, and I'm here with Mark Anderson, who, if you are a regular viewer of this video podcast, are very familiar with. Uh, Mark is the CEO of Strategic News Service. He writes many of our global reports, and he's also the CEO of a company called Pattern Computer that is doing some very incredible work in machine learning and computing, identifying patterns in giant data sets without any algorithmic inputs. Um, and so we are here today to talk about what he does, you know, in his spare time, which is uh, develop probably the most likely um, theory of how the universe actually works. So. If you are an SNS member already, you should have gotten this in your inbox last week. Um, and it is essentially the universe in a page. And one of the things that we heard back when we when we sent this out was, hey, um, this is kind of complicated. Can you explain this a little bit? So that's what we're gonna do here today. We're gonna have Mark explain what's going on here. Um, you will, we will, you know, I have this, You'll see it's kind of complicated. It looks a little complicated, at least. You can't probably see the details too much, but it fits on one page. And we will um, add this to our video later on so you can see the details of what is on this page. But we're going to talk through it a little bit here today just to get started. Um, so, Mark, I'm wondering if you could explain to me, you know, I know as your daughter, I know you've been interested in physics for a very long time. Um, but what was your your intended purpose or goal of creating the universe in a page? So there are two aspects to this, Barrett. One is well-known in science. And it's called reductionism. Not even in favor anymore, I think. But the idea that things can be reduced to a simpler and simpler level. Mm -hmm. Looking for the basic building blocks is what they used to call it. And people thought there were going to be particles. That was wrong. So... Um, that's a, that's a natural human urge, I think. Um, and it has been a normal scientific process for a long, long time. The other one is more new, and that is the idea of going at science in a, in a new way. We've talked about this in our podcast on uh, ethical AI and AI. So instead of, instead of studying it at Stanford, which I briefly did and then left and discussed, um, you, you, would, might, you might take pattern recognition, which is what we've been using at SNS for decades, and apply that to science or to math. So imagine you could look at a, at a host of mathematical equations for something and then find the patterns that were shared, which is how I began the resonance theory project long ago. Mm -hmm. and, and then you'll see that differently from someone who was taught at Stanford. And you might by accident learn things they would never teach you because they didn't know them themselves. So going after science or mathematics in that way, that orthogonal way of pattern recognition and making pattern discoveries is a, is a unique way in a different way, in a better way, in my opinion, of learning things you didn't expect to learn. And so if the hunt for reductionism in physics is worthwhile, and I have always thought it was, then if you applied this particular search method, you might find something more reduced. And that's exactly what we have in the universe on a page. Got and it. That's why we did it. So essentially to make it simpler and easier for people to understand how everything works together. And to provide discoveries and insights that no one had yet, that, that helped you, helped us, helped them see that. So what made you think that doing this was actually even possible? It's an interesting question. I think, I think a lot of people might say, you know, here you say, oh, I've discovered how the universe works and it fits on a single page. And they would say, that guy is full of it, you know? Oh, brown beans, yeah. yeah. Um, well, it's kind of what I just said, Brett. So what made it possible was a commitment to pattern re recognition as a legitimate method for making discoveries in science and mathematics. And once you have that going, um, that's, what makes it, that's what enables it. That's what makes it possible. And, and it turned out I'd done this for so long, both in physics and in technology, that I knew it worked. So the commitment part came easily. Um, the application takes a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and so how did you, once you like had this idea of, of creating the universe on a page, how did you go about, what was the process behind it? Well, when, when we display it on the page about halfway through this conversation, okay. people will see that there are shaded areas on the page. Each of these represent a different area of study. Okay. 
and we're showing how they share attributes. There's actually a geometry which we'll come to shortly. So um, essentially, that's the point is that we were able to go through a process, shaded area by shaded area, or I was, that led to reductionism in each over many years, right? Maybe over three decades. And then on a meta level, go further and recognize the shared properties of all of them. Of each part of the problem, yeah. yeah. And realize um, that in fact, they were there. I mean, even knowing that there was such a thing. And there's a, there's a kind of a cute part answer to this, which is last Christmas, um, where I live, uh, there, there was a beautiful outdoor party with, they're called Swedish stoves, these big log uh, cut up with chainsaws and you pour gasoline inside, you burn them all night. And we're all standing outside to be COVID safe. And three or four friends, including a, a young man who's a, become kind of a, maybe a mentee. And we're sitting around talking about crazy things in physics for about 20 minutes, uh, three friends. And that became a seed conversation. That 20 minute conversation was so cool and so broad reaching. It became a nuclear cement for all these decades of stuff. Hmm. And I think I was trying to help him wow his teacher at the university. Yeah. Um, but probably didn't work because the, the clearly that's the wrong answer according to university standards. Yeah, that he probably got kicked out of the class <laughs> after that. But uh, for you know, for the perspective from the perspective of enjoying that conversation, which I'm sure he did, and we did, and 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 allowing it to be a centralizer for these themes and ideas, it was pure magic. So all these things kind of coalesced that evening, and it took about six more months of of talk back and forth with friends and colleagues to make it make sense and really be sure it's it's the right thing. All right. So um you we you and I have talked a lot about resonance theory before. We've talked about it here on this podcast. Um is this a part of that or how does that fit into this? Some of the things that are in this, so let's mention when we published this last week, there is the one pager you show, you know, there's one, but there's probably 10 pages or 12 pages of footnotes. Yeah, yeah. Which, by the way, could easily be a thousand. Mm -hmm. Pretty funny. I mean, it's true. So you could have 10 books behind that one page to explain everything, but it's a one pager. And um, resonance theory would be in there somewhere. So it helped, it helped the, I think we have now six or seven different um, segments of resonance theory. And um, certainly going through those in, in terms of thought and, and publication created lots of entry points for this and, and included the mathematics of this. Mm -hmm. So um, to that, mostly. To that end, yes. But not so it, kind of, it helped you develop it, essentially. It it's, it's really kind of a subset and an enabler of getting to the next level. And here's the next level. Okay. Well, so why don't you walk us through it a little bit? Okay. Tell, tell me about what's going, tell me about the universe. <laughs> How much time do you got? Three minutes? Four minutes? Yeah. Um, internet time. Internet time. Well, you may know that um, Murray Cantor, who helped us with the flow and interaction thing. So right at the top of this page, it says, first principles, the flow and interaction of energy and time. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to talk about in our three minutes here. Okay. And at the very top, we have flow and interaction itself. Okay. And um, I put in two quotes so people wouldn't think we were totally insane. Um, one from Curtis Wong, who is the curator of the Codex Lester, Leonardo's book uh, that Bill Gates owns. Mm -hmm. He said, you have achieved what Leonardo aspired to. And, you know, that's pretty strong language. And then um, I also included a quote from Murray Cantor, who was a great enabler for us understanding the role of uh, complexity mathematics and all this stuff. And he said, flow and interaction applies to everything everything in the universe. So we've got some very smart folks who've looked at this and seem to agree. Mm -hmm. So right at the top is this, I, this uber, uber, uber meta idea of flow and interaction being the governing principles of all things. Right. Everything in the universe, everything. So matter, energy, time. Everything, everything you can, everything you can name, everything you know about. And so um, that's the, the umbrella. Uh, idea and the, and the idea there let me make sure i'm understanding this correctly but the idea there is that 
everything in the universe can be described by the flow of whatever all things whatever and they're interacting with each other correct okay so that as you may remember i made a book about that mm -hmm. um, with denise hudson davis at that time and um it became the first book on that subject and we were helped by about eight people who showed that this applied to their own universe you know whether it was politics or economics or science or or leaf shapes it applied everywhere mm -hmm. that was really fun um and, and so that's and then and then you might ask the question which i did just more recently uh in an airplane hangar with my friend scott what is flowing and the answer i, I think i was asleep when i did this and i came back and brought it to scott it's like look flow and interaction fine what is flowing is there something simple here and the answer suddenly appeared to me it's like yeah energy is flowing in all the terms of physics that you can think of mass right. energy liquid solid you know what thousands of things you could you could say to that it's all about the movement of energy between different things it's about energy yeah it's just about that that's what's flowing everything else is a detail energy is what's flowing and and if one agrees with that you don't have to but if you do then you kind of go, there's a kind of a left and a right to this page they're going to look at. And so if on the left hand side is what is flowing energy all the way down that page. On the right hand side, you know, it's like, well, interactions, right? That's what we're all about here. Mm -hmm. um, what is time? I'll tell you one thing, no one's ever properly defined time. Not Stephen Hawking, nobody. And so if you read his famous book on time, you end up realizing he doesn't know. <laughs> So um, here's the best stab at it I've ever heard. And, and Scott Biddle, who I, I dedicate part of this to, uh, really gets credit for this. The time is a construct we make to, to create segments, right? It's how we portion things out. And literally, it's how we portion out the flow of things. So it is our construct that allows us to describe that flow of energy. So on the left, we have energy, right? We have time. And now we're ready to do all of physics on one page, right? And on the left is energy and on the right so, is time. So let's talk about that because you go through, you know, you've got the principle of least, affection act, at least effective action in here. You've got the Heisenberg uncertainty principle in here, which is quantum mechanics. Uh, the second law of thermodynamics mm -hmm. is in here. And the Lorenz attractor. Yep. And what is your, so tell me why you, why are you including those things as an application of these? These are kind of the foundational mathematics for major areas of physics, mm -hmm. including new proposals. So the Lorentz attractor is kind of the indicator species for all of complexity math. There's more math than that, but that's kind of the best way to go after the core of flow and interaction. Okay. And that's literally how we discovered flow and interaction with Murray Cantor was his uh, evening speech once about that set of equations. And so we discovered by doing that, we discovered that this was the fundamental theory of complexity mathematics or chaos mathematics, something that even the people at Santa Fe Institute, which is their specialty, I don't think know. And I say that because I've talked to some of them. Mm -hmm. So um, big search for them, find the fundamental theory of why this math works. Why does chaos math works? That's why. Because of flow and interaction. Correct. That should be their fundamental theory. Here is a gift for you. You can have it. And now you have a fundamental theory. So, so the, the, the rest of this page is essentially dedicated to explaining how the flow and interaction of time and energy validates those four principles. Yes. Okay. And so whether you're in quantum mechanics or, or force laws or, or mechanics or um, just make a long list, you're going to find a home here somewhere. Right. And, and it, it'll show you geometrically almost in a, in a map fashion, how you fit into these ideas, whatever you're practicing in physics. And the big proposal here, which is not unique to me, but which maybe I'm nailing down a little harder, um, uh, is the idea of action or least effective action as the central mathematics of all physics. Hmm. And um, I'll say again, I'm not the first person who suggests this, but I came to it differently, as I mentioned earlier. People have been looking at this since the 1500s. Fascinating. The Greeks looked at this. Yeah. But, or, and uh, most of the greatest mathematicians kind of sniffed around this idea too. But um, the way I found it was through pattern recognition. 
so I didn't learn it from the Greeks or from the Stanford guys or whatever. I, I learned it by taking all of these equations that I thought were important and reducing them to a pattern. And the more I did that, you've got a French lieutenant, artillery lieutenant in 200 years ago, using this to figure out how to throw a shell at the enemy. And you've got somebody else using it for, turns out Heisenberg using it for uncertainty. And, and you, you know, you've got E equals MC squared. And the more you look at all these equations, you realize these are all really one equation. Mm -hmm. And they've been found by different people in different times in different ways to do different jobs. It's all one job. So um, it's, it's so exciting when you see that. And so when I, I went back after, as I was working on this page and I, I double checked it again to make sure like, is it that rich a ground? Mm -hmm. And um, I made a list of some of the things that come out of these. The action equation is very straightforward. It's mass times velocity times distance or R, some, some delta number, it's distance, MVR. Well, a short list of what you can get from those three parameters includes and is not limited to classical mechanics, classical fields, electromagnetic fields, gravitational fields, quantum mechanics, quantum field theory, Lagrangians, the Euler-Lagrange equations, Hertz's principle of least curvature, Hamilton's principle and characteristic functions, Maxwell's equations, Feynman's QED path integral formulations, the quantum interference calculations of probability waves in quantum mechanics, the conservation laws by another theorem, thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, special and general relativity, string theory, and resonance theory. So, you know, it's pretty amazing. And uh, fertile ground, good, a good garden to plow in. A good garden. It's amazing. And so yeah. that's a proposal that, again, it's been around for hundreds of years. I'm just putting a nail on it. I'm just saying, I'm absolutely convinced that this is the central equation in physics. And I imagine there'll be a lot of argument and there'll be a lot of agreement. So what's the response been so far? So um, we can usually tell when we publish a physics thing in SNS something about how abstract it is by the responses of the smartest kids in the room. And we kind of know who they are. And uh, everyone else gets really quiet. Mm -hmm. you know? And I don't blame them, it's physics. So um, this time, usually the smartest kids in the room, uh, good luck for us, are happy. And they go right in like, wow, that's great. And you know, let's work more on that. Or how, how does that work? This time, a little muted. And, and it was more like, well, that went over my head, but I'm interested, you know? Uh, how would that work? Or, well, that was surprising. Like the one you were saying, could you spend 20 minutes and uh, help us out? Yeah, yeah. So I think the reaction was engagement uh, and absolute mystification. And, and it's because it's at such a high level, I think. Right. No one's talked to anybody about what we've just talked about. It's the first time. And so, you know, you haven't been exposed to this before if you're really smart in physics, I don't think. And you, it's a lot to bite off in one page. Sure. And so when you say it's a lot to bite off, does that mean, you know, is this, is this work done? Is there more to do? There will always be more to do, but I think it's also done. So we've talked about the top to bottom geometry of the page and the left to right uh, mapping of the page. And there's also kind of a circle to this page. So it may not be a true circle, but I've tried to show that um, we could start with flow and interaction and the mathematics of that, which, which I then sorted by energy and time, and it works fine, it's beautiful, brought down to the bottom where instead of being flow and interaction, it's energy and time sorted, which takes us back to the top. And you know the intention there is to say, all this stuff is really kind of a circle. Yeah, it's circular. Circling around one equation with some other equations that keep it together and just you know two things at the top and two things that are governed. And that's it. It's quite elegant in how you've laid it out. I think it's it's like makes it all, you know, in some ways a lot easier to understand. It should. Yeah. So that's the contribution is that it's not just a better mapping, that it, these are um, discovered by pattern recognition. These are the core ideas and the core functions in the physical world. Well, I hope that uh, everyone watching this has been taking notes. Um, <laughs> unsubscribe, unsubscribe. <laughs> you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna need them to just yeah. explain this to people at, at your uh, next dinner party. 
But I wanted I want to just finish up. I know this is something that you have been working on personally for a long time, but you've also had a lot of um, help and and people to th bounce things off of. Yeah. You know, intellectual partners, and I'm curious, um, who have you included in your dedication here, and why are they there? Well, I'm looking for it. Here it is. Um, there were two lines there. Um, it says for Scott and Megan. Well, Scott is Scott Biddle and um, a really good friend. And I talk to him more than once a day. And he uh, is ex as excited as I am about this. And he was there that night at that uh, Christmas event, you know, outside. So um, we have a, a years long conversation going on about physics. And I really appreciate it. Yeah. And then uh, Megan is my EA at Pattern Computer and at SNS. And uh, she's kind of relatively new to the clan, but she is, um, unlike most people I know, really interested in physics. So um, she, of course, has a different view of it, but she is very encouraging about doing the work. So between Scott and Megan, I've had great support in, uh, from both of them in this. Uh, and they, they are friends. Um, and then the other three names aren't friends because they're dead. <laughs> but uh, Richard is Richard Feynman. Now Kip is not Kip Thorne is still alive. I have yet to meet Kip. I hope I, I will soon. Um, and David is David Bohm, who's passed away. So um, he was a friend of Einstein's, and I had a chance to meet David, and uh, so that was great. So they each of them did really interesting, important work that I think helped lead directly to this single page. <laughs> That's a good that's a good list of contributors yeah. yeah inspired by inspired by that's right richard Feynman. yep Bohm, david Bohm. Bohm. and megan felso and scott biddle there you go all on one page all right well if you are watching this and you want to have your own copy of the flow and interaction of energy and time the universe in a page uh, you can become an SNS member at strategicnewsservice.com. The first month is free. So if you don't like the universe in a page, you don't have to stay an SNS member, but we encourage you to sign up. You'll get all of our analysis, all of our news, um, and you'll be invited to our member happy hours. So the, the next one of which is August 4th, I believe Thursday, August 4th at 4 p.m. Pacific time. If you sign up for a membership now, you can join us at that at that conversation. We're going to be talking to um, Molly Wood, who is the head of Jason Calacanis's Climate Fund, uh, the Launch Climate Fund. So it should be a fascinating conversation about her work. Uh, Mark will be there, I hope, mm -hmm. um, as will the rest of our team, and we would love to meet you. So thank you so much, Mark. This is fascinating as always. <laughs> Unusual. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.